Hi guys, Kelly Gorsuch here for The Workroom. Today we're going over the inverted G-Bob. Um, that's just the cut where we're trying to get that weight off to the side. It's your typical G-Bob, but I'm inverting it so we get real strong in that corner. That's, uh, that's what we're going for. That's a great shape that we like every day in the salon. Um, it's more of a technique. There's a lot of haircuts that you can break off of that, of that technique. So let's, uh, let's hop into it and get some education going. All right guys, today we're gonna talk about the inverted G-Bob, inverted graduated Bob. Um, apparently graduated is too long of a word for us to say, so we always reduce it to G-Bob. Uh, we're gonna come in with our G-Bob. There's a few different ways to do that kind of shape. So the inverted G-Bob is where we're gonna invert everything back to that center uh, static guide. So all we're gonna do, and what I, what I typically will do is, you're talking about some sort of Bob-ish shape from the get. Whether that's a, a slight A-line, just square Bob, whatever you wanna do. What I do that's so different, or at least I feel it's different um, from what most people will do is they kind of like to carve this, they put this shape in that carves out this hole here on the, on behind the ear. So I try to get rid of that. So I'm not trying to do that at all. I'm trying to just keep that as strong as possible um, through there. Now, as you go up in shape, or if you wanted to go up into like a little French, uh, graduated bob there or something you you could do that same shape with using some of the other uh g bob techniques um we'll get into that later or maybe we won't i have no idea I, it's not a shape that's super common so we don't really do it that often I, it's actually not in my um my videos i kind of look at it as more of a visual haircut so it usually comes in like more of the project uh area of the class so um so we're just gonna put that line in. Now, one thing to know is, I'm always gonna come back in and clean the back of this line up dry. It's always gonna happen. There's not a time where that doesn't happen. All right, so all we're gonna do, there's two different ways I'll do this, and then I'll probably cut this with both scissors and a razor, just so you can see it. But sometimes I'll kind of come down, a steep diagonal forward to the back of the ear, or even a little lower, depending on their density. And then I'm basically wanna, I wanna incorporate some of the hair above the occipital bone. Cause I want when that hair like starts to round back up the head, I want a little bit of that. So I'm not leaving this super heavy line to get, I'm, I'm working through that. So a lot of times this is a do as you, as I say and not as I do situation. A lot of the time I'm gonna do things like, uh, I'm gonna, I'll show you that in a second. I'm gonna section off the whole back of the head and do it once. So I can come in and pick my entrance point, right? And then all I'm thinking about is how tight I want that to the head as I come through. So I'm probably gonna go from somewhere like that to somewhere like that, depending on where my length is. It all really depends on my length. What I don't wanna do is come in super, super uh, like early, so that line comes here and then I come in like above it and just kind of chop off that line. Cause what you'll do is you'll get this like little duck bill thing sticking out there. You don't want that. It's really easy to clean up, but you don't want to get it. You want to try to not get it. Um, so that's the whole thing with what I'm doing. And then this line could just shift. It could, you could shift it to here and make this a little heavier, not so like tight up against the head or vice versa. I can start to take this, the top entrance point and get it closer and closer to the head. Um, so if you just start to look at this as shape, right? It makes the whole haircut easier. What I find with people when they're first getting going is they're taking a lot of time trying to follow the guides as if the guide is somehow gonna make it perfect. Well, the problem with that is you have this big spot behind the ear that doesn't have any hair. Well, that fluctuates from person to person. So you can't always attack the haircut the exact same. You have to be thinking about inversion. In this particular haircut, since we're gonna be bringing it back to a static central guide, and we're just gonna flare it out as we come to the side, right? So our entrance point it's gonna start up here and then it's gonna kinda of come out as we come over to the side, right? Like that's 
so that's not going to come into play. This whole, the whole point of this haircut this way is to make sure you get out and you never get that hole over the side. So we're still going to get the G-Bob feel, but it's going to wrap the head beautifully. All right. So this is all a matter of opinion. When we get it back here, or uh, it's just like a decision-making thing that you're going to use your eye to do on the, on the person and the haircut you're going for. But also, too, you can you cannot do any of this angle, as in um, kind of our in our like natural inverted G Bob, which is like coming here and coming here, and you're just kind of cutting everything to a plane, and then that's going to slowly wrap the head because you have everything inverting back, right? So you get this other like more modern. Thing as it wraps the head and you don't have to do that stack bob thing um, I find it to be a prettier more modern version of this so you don't see me do this all too often although I do do them um, I'm not opposed to doing them you just don't see it too often so if you get a chance go watch uh, the natural inversion uh, bob that we do and that'll kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about um, all right so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna we're gonna create one static guide that's going to come through. But I'm going to do this, I'm going to draw this as if um, I was going to do it all at one time. All right, so now on this one, I'm going to take this down and we're going to come out somewhere along that, just above the, so what I don't want to do is bring this and make it bend on that round to get to that cut point, because what you'll get is ledge here when it drops to shape fall. We don't want the ledge, so we want to like walk it up a little bit. So we're going to come out to there, and then we're going to walk that line all the way up, point cutting, point cutting, point cutting, all the way up through the shape. Now, that's going to allow us to go just over the occipital bone, which will give us that softness when it falls to the occipital bone. Now, if you've watched any of my stuff or we've, you've heard me talk about focal points in the front, we never want to hit for the focal point, we want to go slightly above it. Same thing with this concept, you're not trying to create that ledge right at the occipital bone, you're trying to soften it so it slowly comes into that occipital bone. Um, there's nothing worse to me than like super ledgy stuff, now there's a time and place for everything, so understand that. I will put a ledge on when I need to, or when I want to. Um, but most of the time I'm going for very soft haircuts that last in several weeks. Uh, you know, like when I was doing these bob haircuts when I was super young, the guest was coming back four to five weeks. Now they're getting two to three months out of the same haircut. Uh, we're just a lot softer, we're a lot prettier, we're working with their natural hair, their natural shape fall. Just everything is more about them and less about putting a Lego haircut on them. Um, all right. So that's all you really need to know. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, this kind of notice that I take that center of guide and it's a little bit of hair from both sides. It's not all on one side. And then what I'm going to do is kind of pivot across it off the top. So we're incorporating all of that top hair that's already been cut in our next section. And that's going to give us a, like a great starting place for, for that. Now, don't come in and cut that. Don't come in and then like change the top of your line. But I want you to still be visual at the same time. I want you to be looking at, okay, what's my shape from the profile as I turn and be watching it from the profile. So you're putting that shape in and then that way you're less concerned with following your guide perfectly because there will be a time when you, when you go, oh, there's not enough hair in the next section. So you're looking a section ahead and you're going, okay, even though I was going to pivot twice, Right, and then I, my original plan was to pivot behind the ear. There's just not enough hair there to pivot, so now I'm gonna invert, right? So you're, you're always gonna have that decision making. You need to leave that ability to yourself because if you just follow guides sometimes in haircuts, like that density, that texture, just will not work out for you. So always giving yourself the, that opportunity to make a decision. In this one, we're gonna take this hair, we're gonna comb down, and then we're gonna pull back to our static guide and cut. Pull back to our static guide and cut. So down, we're gonna comb down and slowly invert back, all right? That inversion is gonna happen. And what, what that's doing is you don't wanna pull this hair straight back to here because then you're gonna get a square line that comes the same all the way through. So inversion, you're gonna drop the hair, start the round back to your cut point. So you're bringing hair here that will come down and then come down much farther in the hair. 
So what you're gonna see from the back, wow. Um, what you're gonna see from the back perspective is you're gonna see this bob shape here, the entrance point you're cutting somewhere in there, and then what you're gonna see is a slow build out of weight from the entrance point there at the back, and as you're inverting, you're gonna come farther and farther out. And so <clears throat> that's what you're gonna get. And what you're trying to get here is a little bit of weight right here on this back corner. All right, it's so important because what you don't wanna do is come in here and invert this so far that you now are thin here in this back area. This area, and it's probably even like out there, that area needs to stay strong. Just needs to stay strong. Otherwise, you have no shape, you've lost your shape, you've collapsed your shape, it's not doing what you wanted it to do. The whole point of this is that it comes out and then slowly rounds. Now, this bit of weight here, you'll see, we'll leave that to the end. As we come through, we're gonna, we're gonna approach this a little differently. So as we come through, what you're gonna see now is, let me get the towel. All right, so as we come through with this shape, right, we're gonna, and you've got that shape that comes out, right? We're gonna start to go, this is all bobbed, and all you're trying to do with this technique is to put that shape in, right? So now what we need to do with the layers is kinda come a little diagonal forward, and I borrow a little back part as my guide to transition it through. Um, and I'm not, there is no guide, there's no, bit of hair here but what you're doing is coming to the side and visually figuring out what you need to take off but what you don't want to do is cut into this back part of the hair what i want to do is layer kind of above it and then also start to get so we're going to invert this as well and then also start to get uh another shape from short to long out here to get to make this front corner strong as well so not only do we get that strength in that back corner on this haircut as we come out, right? We're still trying to make all that strong. So we're strengthening up that back corner. We're also, as we come through with the layering pattern, just layering surface on top of this to come through. And then our whole priority is to make sure that that front corner stays strong. Both of those corners are needed to make this haircut pop. All right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna pick some sort of shape off of here and then everything will be inverted back to some sort of cut point in this area and it really moves and I'll static it again so you really have two cut points you're gonna have one kind of cut point in this general vicinity and then you're gonna have a, another cut point that kind of happens somewhere and it can be pretty square if you want or it can be a little shorter at the top if you want but somewhere on the side that's gonna be inverted kind of back back of ear-ish, you're gonna have another inversion that you're inverting everything to. And you're just surfacing this top area off to make it melt coming forward. You can leave this as its own in its own haircut, but I find if you just put like a soft bit of layering in it, it makes the whole haircut transition to the front much, much prettier. And then what you'll see is <clears throat> there will be those two, those two inversions in the shape here, and you'll have this area right here, right, that's a little bit like weighty. You won't see it so much in the haircuts because we're doing it so surface with the layering pattern, but you'll know it's there and when you pick it up, it will be a weight ledge. And that is not gonna be something when you first cut it that is a problem, but as it grows in, that will be a problem. So what you'll see is when we come back in dry and we dry cut this, we'll slice through that area, leaving the weight, leaving that weight, but slicing through to give some negative space so it moves and blends a little bit, right? Because a lot of times our, our dry cutting is just the bitters of the haircut, so it's gonna help everything blend in together. Does that make sense? So uh, focal points, whatever, I, I already have the mannequin cut with some focal points in the front, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna touch on that too much. I might just clean it up for the haircut. But typically speaking, you're gonna have some sort of focal point in the front of this, even if it is just like a little bit of dusting off of that corner in the very front. So you don't have these like little points that like hang over from one side to the other. 
uh, if they flip it just slightly out of the part. So I'll come in and dust just like a little bit. And it might be so small that you don't even see it, but it's enough to take the curse off of that like super heavy corner and get you the looseness to be able to flip the hair wherever you want. So let's, um, let's stop there. Let's get, let's get into the mannequin work. Hopefully some of that made sense to you. I'm gonna try to show you this angle. Okay, I'm gonna do it a couple. So I'm gonna do the first, like I was showing you. Kind of just working it up there. And that first. So I'm trying to show you from the profile so you see what I'm looking at when I'm cutting. So I'm kind of pulling this out to its cut point, grabbing it, and then kind of walking it up. And that's gonna choke, tell me like, how high I want this line to go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of come up, and like most people would come down into here, and that's fine, but the lower you hold this, the heavier you're gonna make that line because it doesn't swing as far. So I kind of start by like holding it up a little bit, and then that's gonna give me my softness, and then I can start cutting my super soft point cut line. Now you notice that I try to stay with my uh, length there when I'm point cutting, I'm trying to walk that line down. And if you notice here, I'm leaving a little bit of weight on this corner because I don't want it to duck build. Good, 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 good. So then, my next section with, the, with that would be kind of coming over and pivoting but then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist down and I wanna be in the center of my guide section. So if I'm behind it, I wanna be center of the guide. So there's a little bit of hair from the right side coming to center of guide. All right, coming down, inverting down. So that hair here is now here, that hair here is here. So just that little inversion is gonna start to give me that steep out towards the corner. All right, so when I come down, my entrance point is slowly curving down. All right, same thing here. Gonna come down and back to my line. Now this one, the only hair you're gonna cut typically is going to, and you, know, you notice I'm kind of holding it lower, because most of that hair is just gonna be in the low part of that haircut. So now, if we're looking at it, we're just gonna come out and that is gonna be ever so soft coming down into that strong corner, right? So that's gonna give us that little, in right there, that's so pretty. And we'll just be able to like, give ourselves a little bit of life there. Now, <clears throat> let me change this slightly recessioning and then I'm, I'm gonna do back strong and weak sides here. So the three main sections for this. All right, and what I'm gonna do is go through the same process, but the whole way through. So now, which is awesome for me because what I like to do is I like to decide, okay, I want that cut point here to start there and then Right there, that's where I go, okay, cool, I'm gonna cut it there. In this particular one, I'm gonna start just about right there, and then slowly walk the hair down. So if you notice, I don't drop and recut, I just walk, walk down to that center guide, deep point, and then just ever so slightly. Now. If if I just comb that out, you can start to see that right in. Now you can go real tight here. I, I have a tendency um, <clears throat> to go as tight as I can uh, in that area most of the time. Um, and then I just really work the line afterwards. So now I'm gonna kind of come off of that and then basically the same thing. I'm just kind of coming through with that pied section and then walking it all down 
inverting it back to that static guide. Inverting back to that static guide. And if, like, if that was heavy on that one, I may not cut any length, I might just cut into that weight. Now here on this one, it's really probably not gonna reach, but I'll cut in to that weight at the bottom anyway, just to soften. Now you see we have that line, perfect. We're gonna drop down and this is going to do exactly what we want it to do and that's get out before we get to the corner. So if you notice here from this angle, we've got like a really soft entrance point moving down towards that corner and it's as strong as you can get it there. So we're not gonna get any thinness as we come through. All right, and then once I kind of round that up, it will look even thicker. Uh, so that's a soft, modern, inverted G-bob. Now I'm gonna show you the other side, taking that central guide, which incorporates a little bit of both sides. And remember when I do that, I can't invert all the way to one side of that guide. I have to be down the center. So you're gonna be pulling some hair towards the center from the opposite side you're working on, right? And then the rest of it's gonna be down that center. So this time I'm gonna do something, um, I'm gonna do this with the razor and show you the same thing. Oops, that, guide, that first guide is already cut, so. All right, I'm coming off, coming, um, inverting back to that. And what I really want you to do is watch shape more than anything else, especially when you start to cut this with a razor. Like that's, that's all you can do. That's the most important part of the game. So that hair has got to come down, it's got to come back to its line, and then you're, you're gonna take your weight out first with the razor, and then you're gonna walk it down that line. Same here, I'm gonna razor out that weight real softly, and then I'm gonna walk that line down. Same thing here. So you can see here, there's a little bit of a, a, a corner. So I wanna, I wanna soften that corner, and then I'm just gonna slowly walk that shape down. Right, it's key to just work super, super visual with the razor. So this section is always gonna be one, it looks like a big section, but the problem is there's just not en enough hair here to treat it as two sections, because you'll, you'll start to get into some weird stuff. So what I'm gonna do is slight, well, if I was gonna walk it, I'm gonna just go ahead and cut, comb it all in one section now. Um, coming down. And then I'm really just, because I'm working on that static guide, I almost started traveling that. That's what happens when you heard that hiccup. All right, and so, back to that inversion. So notice like on this bottom, I'm not back to the center. I'm just kind of working on this corner here. So you see how heavy it is. I'm just gonna soften it down ever so slightly and I'm gonna visually kind of give myself a little bit of a cut here. Because what I don't want to do is end up cutting some sort of hole there. I'd rather visually be correct and then come back through dry and cut through that. Like for me, this whole line right here, this whole section tends to be heavy. So when I come back through, uh, when I come back through dry, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna slice that weight out to kind of blend it through to the front. Or if you were so inclined, you would just pick it up almost like a diagonal forward horizontal and slice through that now just to give like a little bit of looseness to that shape if you wanted to. Um, it's really your druthers at that point, but you wanna lean on the thing that you're the most comfortable with so you don't make a, a giant mistake in that hair. All right. And the problem, the thing with the razor is it cuts so fast. If you cut something wrong out here, if I cut this by accident, I'm gonna have a hole there. There's no way around it. Now, if you're loose enough and you're cutting with your eye and you do do it, it won't be as visual. But if you do that when you're trying to follow the guide perfectly, you're gonna get into this problem where you're then gonna follow the guide that you now miscut wrong and you're gonna create an even heavier ledge or you're gonna feel the need to bring the hair from the front to that back and kind of slowly cut out from it and get a little longer, but you're still just, you're making 
you're exasperating the problem instead of just moving on and like skipping over it and using the hair the next section to cover it up um, you know it's little things like that that will help when you're first getting going and then after a while you won't make those mistakes because you'll be looking down the road so much and if you do you're a pro you'll be able to fix it quickly back to the scissor cut I'm taking a, a pretty steep diamond forward section and then all I'm gonna do is lift up and soften right on top of that. And I don't wanna to cut too much into that bottom. I'd rather leave that a little heavier so I don't get any holes out there. Um, all I'm gonna do on this next section, well, actually this whole, because there's a bang, there's only one more section. So we're gonna invert down and back now. So you can see all that weight at the bottom. And then I'm just gonna ever so slightly layer the top into it right so now i have that secondary boom 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 out i get all my strength in the front i have all, as much strength as i can in that back corner i have as much strength as i can on that front corner now that's not to say that you can't come up in here and do some sort of shape up in here you you certainly can um but that's not what we're showing i want to show this angle i want to show this angle with the razor so doing it again All I'm kind of watching is how much layering I want here on the top. But for the razor's sake, I'm probably doing it because I want some, some real movement in it. So just going to go short to long out, keeping that real PC. And then let, on this side, let's not invert it. Let's walk it through because we're working it with the razor. So we're probably not trying to keep it super heavy. So I'm just going to come center of section, maybe even invert it to the back of that section. Right, so I can invert to the back of that section. Just getting some negative space in there and then surfacing just slightly. And getting off, I don't want to thin my length off, so I'd rather leave a little extra length that I can come back in and look at dry than to make a mistake. So if you haven't noticed by now, a lot of this haircut is just make, not making mistakes. In another inversion, back a section, I want to be careful not to cut too much into my corner because that can be real thin on people and then surfacing. And so now I'm a little bit more layered, which is probably what I was going for with the razor. And then if I want from here, I can come down and just edge into this with my razor. So I still keep that razor feel and then just kind of work the shape from there. So if I was going to do a bang on this or for a graduation, I would kind of just pop in my forward graduation right then and there. Right, and if your corner's too heavy, you could always just kind of adjust the corner. I don't, I don't even adjust that too much, but just adjust the corner slightly. Now, what's really cool about this shape is I can now come and rework the length to whatever I want it to be. In this case, I'm gonna leave it. All right, so I have my shape here in, and all I wanna do is figure out what do I want from here. So what I can do is I can come in and I can start to take this off now and just make that bottom shape the shape I want, which will crisp this up a ton. And this has to be done dry because I don't care how well you cut that wet cut. It's always nice to get like a visual finish on this. Um, basically all I'm gonna do, and you can see this side's razored so it's a lot looser is I'm gonna start to pick up and just put some negative space in that. And they have to be good sized pieces of negative space because otherwise you won't see it. So I'm gonna pick up, break through. And then all I'm gonna do is just keep walking it down. And you can see here, the more I do this as I get down to the bottom, the more aggressive I can be because there's so much more hair. And the more it's gonna take it in and closer to the nape and as you get to the to the very bottom you can really kind of get after it a little bit 
Uh, especially on a man because a mannequin because they're really heavy right there. It's not quite as heavy on a real person. And then a real person won't stick out like that. It'll tighten right against that head, which is super nice. So you'll be able to take that from the side and just build this beautiful shape that comes all the way down. What I do to thin, what I do to, to give it like that same impression that I would want to put on a, on a real person is I really get in there and soften that last little bit and that'll make it feel like a real person. I wouldn't really have to do that to a real person because their hair doesn't grow out from their head like a mannequin and stuff. So the other thing is here, when I come in and I do this scissor cut, you can see that entrance point coming down, right? You can even see it there. You can really see it like coming through and coming out in a hurry and leaving that tuft of weight there. So what I'm gonna do is kind of work with it from that direction. I'm, I don't wanna come in and get horizontal on it. I wanna come in and work on it as if I'm, as the, kind of the same way I work the shape in. That's one of the things you'll notice about how I dry cut is I'm always just working off of the shape I just cut for the most part. There's times where I pick stuff up and, and I'm doing um, horizontal where I went vertical just to soften up a, a weight line or something. So that's all I'm doing. Just keeping it super, super beautiful. Really attacking the face of that. I mean, this is, bob haircuts are like my, one of my feet, uh, least favorite, these graduated bobs are like some of my least favorite haircuts to do. Um, but when you do them and, and it gives you like this feeling of like perfection and it's super nice. Um, I, I just don't like them because they don't hold up as well as other haircuts. So they're a bit weightier and they don't have the same grow out feel for the guests. So I tend to steer clear of them, but man, when you do them and they're looking super nice, like this one's getting that beautiful like thing off to the side, there, nothing beats it. It just really is super, super clean. Just being honest about that. I want you guys to, to really hear like the honesty of like what we're gonna, what you guys are gonna come into every day in the salon, right? Like that whole feel. So just banging this in. And then I just softened it up a little bit, but I, I want this bit to square a little more than it did. So just visually like cutting weight out, cutting length off until I get exactly what I want. Now here would be the time on someone if I wanted to just lop off the front. I would probably do it like right, like right here and just visually cut my shape in. Um, totally up to you, but that's kind of where I would do it. So moving through that front, I'm gonna lift up slightly. This has all been razor, so I'm not really gonna dry cut too much. And then just kind of, just kind of looking at where my corners are. And then I'm gonna pick up one time horizontally, and this is something I do do. Because I want to, I want to make sure that all that separation is happening where I exactly where I want it, and then I'm going to come back one time, and you'll see right here that gets a little too heavy for me as it transitions forward. So I'll just soften that, which actually made that line crisp up and get a little heavier, and then I'm going to work work through just to the front uh, a little bit, so it just hugs that chin. Um, ever so slightly. Now, if you get like a point here, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the curse of that point. So what I typically do is kind of pull up and then soften it just with my blade. And I'm basically just layering off that last little bit. And it's just gonna soften it up towards the face like ever so slightly. And then one little thing there that I don't want popping out. And then I just like will check the connection between my my bangs and my for uh, my bangs and my for a graduation and I'm just gonna pinch up right there um, Just remember that like on a, on a real person. This is mid-eye this bang is mid-eye So even though it's a little higher than her eye here on a real person, that's gonna be mid-eye and Then I'm just gonna check that connection between the bang and and the um, start of the entrance point of that for a graduation and then I'm just gonna lift up and just ever so slightly take some of that weight out. Now you notice I was careful to not cut the exterior line. 
if I want to do that, I want to come back in and just delicately cut the weight out exactly where I want it. So we have like just this beautiful blend out. Now if I just, if I like the weight and I just want a little separation there and come in from the side slightly and carve that just one time so it blends into the side just ever so slightly better. And then, so same thing on this side, we were talking about just getting this weight off of the top here because we did a scissor cut on that side. I'm just putting a couple little stripes in there to get this hair some breathing room and just let that do its thing as it comes forward into that weighty spot. Now remember, this is that corner I was telling you about. So if right here, once I di did that slice through it, if it didn't blend, um, if it didn't blend enough, I could just come in, lift that up, and then just carve out a couple spots to just help it blend all the rest of the way. And then here, we just put a little kick in there. All right, kind of my finished looks with both sides. I did some blast drying, did some cushion brush drying, did some finish cutting. Um, I did the base cut. We did the left side with scissors, the right side with razor. And you can see the difference. A little bit of a little bit of softer shape on this side. I went a little heavier because of the razor. This side I kind of left it a little looser with my scissor cut. But if you're trying to get like, I mean that's just a subtle difference, but like all the difference in the world to them, especially with the grow out phase. I'm a little heavier on this side than I am on my razor side, uh, which is exactly what I would probably be going for. You can still see that beautiful like out. On, on the back on both sides, that beautiful G, uh, inverted G-bob shape. Where, and then the strength in the corners. I mean, let's not forget how important that is on the everyday guest. I mean, the strength in this corner with a razor is incredible, right? So that's what we're going for. And really, all I ever want you guys looking at is shape here. What is that shape doing as it works around the profile? And then when it comes out, boom, weight, boom to the corner. Much heavier on the scissor side, boom, weight to the corner, boom, weight to the corner. Right, and that gives me that ability to kind of kick that out if I want. Whereas the razor side, I kind of edged it off, it's probably gonna come more in and hug the face. Um, both of them I just kind of made match with the existing bang. Um, I, might even, I might even pop in a, a layer or two there on like a real guest just to give me a little something. But it feels pretty good overall. The shape feels good on that bang with the um, with the graduation, and that that is uh, that's what I'm going for. Just trying to make that whole thing work and be solid. Um, I hope you like the inverted G bob, and uh, there's a couple break off videos off of this, so go check them out.